Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. In this video, I'm going to be painting one of the mechs from Farsight. This is the Armoured Mech, and I've sprayed this using Army Painters Black Primer. I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys want to support the channel. Pick up that primer, it'll be an affiliate link, and it will make me dollar. Now, to some extent, I could just leave it like that. I think that looks so much better than the grey plastic. Really, really cool looking black mech. But we'll carry on painting it because, well, that wouldn't be much of a tutorial if I just told you to spray it black. I've attached this to my Redgrass Games miniature holder. It's the 360 one, so it's really, really good for spinning, which I find is really, really useful when you're dry brushing a miniature quite a lot, which is how I'm going to be painting this up. I'll also leave an affiliate link to this below if you've never seen it or picked it up. I've done videos on it in the past. Find that was on the channel. It's very, very handy when you need to do a lot of spinning, and I normally use it for big miniatures or dry brushing, and that's where I'm going to be going with this. So we're going to start with some dry brushing. And for this, I'm going to be using Army Painter's new Masterclass Miniature Dry Brush, as well as Army Painter's Machine Gun Metal, a dark silver. I'm going to get some on the brush, and then we're going to remove most of it onto this piece of kitchen paper here. And when hardly any is coming off, we're going to commence dry brushing. Now, depending how you want this to look and feel, you might just want to do straight down swipes and build that up so the light's just hitting from above. I'm just going to look at each piece and just bring it up to a metallic looking colour with different directional swipes until I've got it looking to the silver level that I would prefer. I'm not necessarily trying to make it look like it's only getting light from above here. I'm just trying to bring it back to silver and just avoiding having to use any shade, any washers by giving it a nice spray in black to begin with because that's going to fill in all the, the recesses. We're going to, that's why we're dry brushing if it's not immediately obvious. By dry brushing, we're very lightly applying paint to all of the raised sections of the miniature and that's going to end up missing out all of the recess sections and that's going to leave those looking black and giving it a nice looking shadow. Now this is going to take quite a lot of time but it's the it's basically all of the work of painting up this miniature. I'm just going to go round. You can probably want to reapply paint to your brush several, several times. Really take your time doing this nice and lightly. Build up the coats. Get it as silver looking as you want. And yeah, I'm going to go away because as fun as watching me do this is, although it is quite cool on camera, hopefully when I finish editing this video, it's going to come across too. Like this miniature is almost just appearing out of the shadows for me, watching through the lens. Very nice. Anyway, I'm going to go do this and I'll be back once I've applied enough silver to him. Six hours later and I've finished dry brushing on that silver. And guys, I have to say, to some extent, just stop here. <laughs> now, again, it wouldn't be much of a tutorial if I did, but I've, this is the second one I've painted. Now this is, I did a practice one and I'm doing this one and this is actually I mean, it's all subjective, isn't it? But this is my favorite look for this miniature. And I could see you just painting up all the mechs like this and they'll look formidable on the board. But let's carry on. I'm gonna use a bit of Claymore Blade, Army Painter's lighter silver, and we're gonna carry on with the dry brush technique. I'm gonna dry brush as much as I can for this miniature to get a really quick paint job that looks great with very minimal effort. But we're gonna be a lot more careful with this one. So I'm gonna start picking out some parts of the, the bot. So we'll do we'll do his knees down here. Just get that a little bit brighter now down here and we'll get this knee as well. Get the very top of his thighs. Do mechs have thighs? This one does. Quite quite powerful thighs. We'll get a bit on there too. Just get a bit more off this brush. Catch the top of his boot. So I'm gonna just go round and get the top edge of anywhere. I'd like it to be a little bit more shiny maybe around his face and his chest a little bit, bring some attention back to the center of the miniature and lots around the edging of his gun. So yeah, just a little bit more accurate dry brushing now. Obviously do as you please. You could do some edge highlighting here, just catch the edges of every single bit. That would look quite cool. Or you could just do the very top where the light would be catching like I'm doing, up to you. It's going to add another level of detail, another depth, level of depth to this miniature. And so I'll go around and do this now. Right, I added the deeper 
silver highlights. It's quite hard to see. The light is shining off this, but this looks absolutely awesome in person. I think I was very careful adding that extra layer of bright silver and it's improved the miniature again. I could just stop here. It's subjective. I'm going to carry on and you guys stop where you want. I'm going to be using some true copper. I think that's what it's called. Army painters copper. And I'm going to be picking out some bits that I just want them to be a little bit more interesting, a bit of a different color. I want some details. I'm not entirely sure where and what, but let's try adding something to this little compressing crusher hand here. I think we'll take this away from being silver, make it a nice copper color. I think I've misplayed and I should have tried to dry brush this on to keep the tarnish level similar. If you have a small enough dry brush, maybe I should have done this first, dry brushed on this detail and then the silver over the top so it would blend. I just think if I tried to dry brush this on, I'm gonna catch all the silver that I've just done. So possibly do this first and do the silver around it on top of it. Don't think it would matter too much if you caught a bit of silver on this. It would just make it a little bit shinier, which is probably might even be what I do later on to highlight this up. But oh, that's quite nice. Looking a bit different, a bit of interesting color. Let's pick out some more points. I should just mention I'm using my Red Grass Games double zero brush here. Again, there'll be an affiliate link in the description if you'd like to pick up the same brushes and support the channel a little bit. I think 5% goes to the channel. And it's the same place as this, this holder, and this holder's done well. Normally I'd be using the hobby holder, but because of all of the spinning, I think this 360 one is a little bit superior at dry brush spinning. Paint it down a little bit of copper down there. I'm gonna go around and pick out some more pieces and I'll show you how that looks in a second. And now I'm finished with the true copper. I did a bit more than I was expecting to do. I think it looks awesome. I'm loving how these colors are complementing each other. But yeah, I just picked some random bits to, well, not random, educated pieces to pull out and hopefully make the guy look a, look a little bit more interesting. So I've noticed I've been pretty much using the Army Painter Metallics paint set here. Guys, I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to pick it up. Again, it'll be an affiliate link. Guys, so much stuff to support the channel with. But yeah, I've just noticed I'm using all this and I'm going to move on to this Weapon Bronze next. And that's going to be used to highlight up this true copper. So grabbing some on the brush and we're just going to kind of edge highlight some pieces of this where I think the light would be catching. So I think this claws pretty good to add a sparkle down the edges. Probably get some on this little pattern in the middle. A little bit just on this coil round here. Picking out some of this, what is this? This looks like an electromagnet. I also contemplated painting this bit using the copper, but decided against it. Less is sometimes more, but it's just because it was a bit close to this. I think it would be a cool piece to put some color into. Along there. Where else have we added some? This little loop here, this rail. Try and get some of the barrels here. Speaking of these rails here, let's highlight along the top. We also caught these two bars down here. I'm just gonna catch the top bit, I think, with this highlight, and probably leave that other one. It's quite in the shadows. Oh, did I mention I painted lots of this tubing in here? I think that adds a nice little bit of detail. And then I've gone for painting this whole, what even is this, this whole box up here. Again, I'm just going to go with some rough edge highlights just to give some depth to the shading here. And we'll call that a day. Well, that's nicely highlighted up. Now I'd add a few more bits to bits I forgot to mention on camera. Hopefully this is coming across reasonably well in the video. I can't tell. It's so shiny in real life. It looks amazing. I'm really digging it. So I'm going to be on to some details now. I'm going to use... Army Painter's Crusted Saw, this is. A really, really maroony, purpley, dark red. And I'm going to be doing some of the work on some of the cabling it's got. So it's got these, uh, don't even know what these are, these sort of cables here. I'm just going to give these a light dry brush and I'm going to add, tidy it up a bit with the detail brush because I'm not going to be quite able to get all of it using this as carefully as I want. So I'm going to do the bulk and that hopefully will leave plenty of that black in the background, leaving it still quite quite dark, quite shaded. And then just off camera, I'll just tidy this up with a detail brush, make sure it goes all the way to all the ends. It just fills that in nicely. Just dabbing this on really, just lightly dry brushing it across, trying not to get any 
on the metallics. Oh, got a bit there. Ah, wiped it off. Nice. Something like that. And then as I mentioned, I'm just going to tidy this up right to the edges with the detail brush. I'll tidy this up perfectly, perfectly. And I'll tidy it off as best I can to my ability off camera. But I'm also going to just show some of this cabling. So there's two wires here. I'm going to have a red wire and a blue wire. And we'll start with a red. So I'll just give this a base coat. And this crusted saw a nice dark red. And we'll highlight that up with a brighter red momentarily. So I want that in red. Do tidy this up some more off camera. But we'll also do this big cable here. Let's get this all in red around the back as well. Again, I'll just make sure I've got that fully covered in a minute off camera. And then there's also, can we see this? So it's a little cable here in between these sort of metallic cabling. So I'm going to paint this in red too. Just add a splash of colour that will really pop out once I brighten that up. Any more cables anywhere else? One down the front leg here, so I'll get that one in red too. Oh, I overlooked one of the bits we should do red. We should do these missiles it's got loaded up in this gun. They'll look awesome with a bit of bright red. Red is for danger, slash explosives. I'm going to highlight up that crusted saw with some abomination gore, a brighter red. Just give that some shine to this missile, some brightness on the tip. And the same on some of the raised parts of this cable. I actually might leave that kind of dull, just a tiny, tiny bit just down the centre to give some depth. But I'm not too bothered about making those cables pop out. But I will make this cable pop out. Any of the wiring I've painted on. I'll give a bit of a highlight to. Just carefully get this tiny little strand here. And I'll do the ones between his legs off camera. Just because they're a bit fiddly to get to. There we go. A bit of abomination gore highlighting. I don't even know if anybody's driving these vehicles. But I want to give a slight illusion a glass cockpit here so I'm going to use some denim light denim by the army painter everything's the army painter after the whole set the army painter but a little bit of light denim very watered down just to paint over the silver on the cockpit leaving the black pretty much as it is just a slight Im impression that that might be glass there make it a little bit more interesting I'll also use this to paint on the base coat for this additional wire here. I said I'll put a blue wire in. So let's lighten it up with this. Oh, no, I'm not liking how that is. Let's go with a darker blue for the base. So I've decided I'm going to add a little bit of green detailing. So I'm going to start painting this wire in green instead. So a nice dark green base coat. This is elf green. I'm going to apply this to a few places. Starting with this wire, picking up where I left off. Wiring done. Also, I'm going to try and make this look a bit green, maybe a little bit glowy green. I don't know how much I'll bother making it glow, but I just decided just add in a little bit of detail colouring. Now, by all means, don't bother doing this if you don't like it. And if you do like it, I've shown you what green looks like. You could do blue, red, anything you want, if you want to add it in. Again, I'm not going to go over the top trying to make that look like it's glowing. Just a little bit of light, I think, just a bit of colour really. I'll also do the top. I have got a video on the channel where I do some OSL blue lighting on a little tree monster. I think it looked really good for how easily I did it. And if, if you would like this to look glowing, I would recommend checking out that video. And then... And then one of the main reasons I chose elf green as the base is because I think it'll look nice as the, the ground colour matching that dark green artwork of the board. So I'm just going to go through and just paint this elf green for its base coat. Right, time to highlight up that green, make it nice and bright. I'm going to use a little bit of Kraken skin. It's very, very pale, bright green. I'm just going to get that cable in there like so then I also did these tips here just in a green so again we'll just highlight up some of the edges here 
at both sides of this and then we'll add a thin layer hopefully roughly in the center of here but I don't mind I'm not going for mega super accuracy by all means do a better job here depending how much you care about this piece of detailing in here something like that and then again roughly going to get the center of this green bit in here I'm very much racing against the clock today though so I'm not taking as much time and care as I would like but you guys take your time achieve the results you would like and I'm going to use a splash of poisonous cloud a really bright green now just to get those tips on here and a thin line down the highlight on the sides if I can very very bright st stabby things there now and again an even thinner central line down here now if I was trying to make this look like it was glowing as I mentioned I'd probably be following along my OSL video and we'd be getting some of that light to emit out and start lighting up around this area of the mech but I'm not really going for that I'm just going for a bit of a neon glowy look here a bit like that I think for my final step I'm going to use some green tone some green shade some green wash by the army painter it's the only wash I've used and I'm just going to slap this on the base to give some variation in this green grass that he stood on and pop out some of the tiny tiny details I should mention I painted this little arrow in silver just off camera just to pop that out don't even know what it's for not played the game yet but thought you might want to be able to see it quite easily so shine that up I'm also using red grass games size 2 brush for this I, I use it for all the base actually the black around the outside and the green in the center here and now the wash I don't know if I've mentioned guys there are actually some affiliate links in the uh, in the, the old description below probably not mentioned that at all this video but yeah if you guys pick up anything that I've used in this video from those links get a small commission and I do genuinely use all of this stuff I didn't <laughs> as much as I've co comically hopefully banged on about it during this video I don't actually use this stuff to try and sell it to anybody. I just use it because these are good brushes, a decent holder for when you're doing lots of dry brushing and spinning a miniature, and then lovely paints. So they are my preferred tools of choice. There we go. I'm going to leave that to dry and we'll have a look at how the model looks completely finished. And with that, I am completely finished. And whoo, this is this is a weathered beast of a machine. I, I, I'm enjoying. This is probably not probably. This is the first mech I've ever painted, and it was very very simple, straightforward techniques. Hopefully, the tutorial is useful for you guys. Uh, if you've never painted before and you've got this game, this is a lovely place to start. You can, as I can band on about all the way through the video, you can stop at any stage. Purely just spraying it in black looked so much better than the plastic. And then just dry brushing some silver on really knocked it up the next level. And then if you would like to add details in like I've done myself, it, it does really bring it to life. And it's really, really, really simple, really straightforward didn't need super accuracy and I think it's come out looking fantastic I'm excited to put this on the battlefield anyway guys thank you all ever so much for watching let me know if you've played this game and what you think and I will see you again next week